Hi, my name is Greg Pellia. I'm with West Roofing Systems and welcome to another edition of Whiteboard Roofing. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the ballpark cost to restore TPO and EPDM roofing systems uh, with silicone coating. Um, so the ballpark cost right off the bat for EPDM, $350 to $7 per square foot. And for TPO, it's $4 to $7 per square foot. So $3 to $7 range is pretty average uh, for both of them. But they... You know, I wish I could give you a more focused price, say, you know, it's 450 or 550, wherever it might be, but there are so many variables uh, with commercial roofing costs that it would just be impossible to give you a more direct focused cost. So I'm gonna go through uh, 11 different variables real quickly today that'll influence the cost from the three to four to seven dollar range. Um, that way you'll know your roofing system and how you answer these questions and maybe you'll have a better idea on a more realistic uh, focused cost. So the first thing is the amount of wet insulation or bad decking. Um, no roofing system should ever be installed over uh, wet insulation, just gonna cause issues on the road. Um, certainly bad decking needs to be removed or replaced, but um, those are you know priced at a per square footage basis, but a roof that doesn't need any of that done versus one that needs you know 10% of the roof, you know, kind of uh, ripped off and replaced, you know, it's kind of a huge difference in cost there. Um, second thing is job extras. So we're talking about uh, flashings, gutters, downspouts, metal drip edge. Um, those are kind of job extras that um, can increase a project's cost. Um, no surprise there. Third thing is a uh, new breather or one-way vents. Maybe you have some moisture built up or maybe just some ventilation issues, but sometimes um, those are recommended to be added to your project. Um, and certainly if you need them or don't need them, will influence uh, your project's cost. Uh, the fourth thing is whether a cleaning solution may be required. Um, some manufacturers of coating, like, yep, you need to clean this roof with uh, this sprut before uh, we feel confident that the adhesion will be perfect when we put the coating down. Um, some roofs might need that, they might not need it, um, but um, that cleaning solution might be required. Um, next thing is an adhesion promoting primer. So before any coating system will go down, there's always an adhesion test just to make sure that coating is definitely gonna um, go down over the existing roof. It's not gonna come up and go away after a certain amount of time. But sometimes adhesion tests fail, and sometimes an adhesion primer might be needed. So whether it's needed or not can influence the cost of your project. Um, same thing with the bleed blocking primer. Um, EPDM roofs, they kind of leak this um, chemical over time, and um, it could come through the top coat of coating and leave behind a yellow type membrane in the top coat when it should be white or gray or whatever color you desired, but changing it yellow is just aesthetically not pleasing, something you don't want. So maybe that bleed blocker primer might be needed, um, could add some cost to your project. Um, next thing is the length of warranty. Uh, length of warranty is always determined by the thickness of their product um, installed. So for silicone coating systems, um, for a 10 year warranty, you'll get 20 mils of total thickness. Uh, for a 20 year warranty, you get a 30 mil total thickness. So uh, the longer the warranty, the more materials that's needed. Um, obviously it's gonna cost a little bit more. Um, another thing is eliminating standing water. Um, so these areas need to be built up because um, the insulation is most likely flat. Um, TPO and EPDMs are flat, but if they're standing water, ponding water, something has happened to where that water is just sitting there and can't run off the roof. You need to build those areas up so that the roof has the proper slopage to run the water off. Um, how it's supposed to be done. Um, if your roof already has proper sloping, um, no issues, no added costs there, but if there's multiple areas that need to be built up, uh, could add to your project's cost. Um, next thing is the distance from the roofing contractor. Um, now we go state by state, all over multiple states to do these projects. Um, it's because, you know, we have, you know, we've been a company for 40 years. We do 20 year warranties all the time. We're approved uh, applicators of all these different manufacturers' coatings. Um, we're not just some fly-by-night contractor that buys the first coating from Home Depot, um, slaps it on whatever thickness they want to, and call it a day and you'll never see them again. So there's a lot of different you know, things there um, that just give you the trust that the job is going to be performed well. That should be the most important thing, but um, certainly the contractor has to travel. Um, hotel stays, gas, all that, all that stuff um, can add to a project or not add to, a, add to the project. Um, next thing is, you know, maybe sometimes there's additional fasteners that need, need to be used. It's kind of just the, having the roof properly prepped. Um, sometimes the TPO roof doesn't have, isn't secure enough in certain areas, or the contractor did, that installed it before didn't put enough in certain areas to keep it intact, so additional fasteners need to be in, included. Um, that could add 
cost your product as well. And then the last thing is just the vendor cost for silicone. You know, we buy silicone off many different manufacturers out there, but there's you know raw material prices, there's labor shortages, there's supply chain issues. There's a lot of things behind the scenes that we really have no control over, um, but their pricing influences what you know, we can charge. Um, and those fluctuate um, pretty greatly over the last couple of years, just with everything going on. Um, so that influences the cost of your project. Um, but if you wanna learn any more of these 11 points, um, there's a link in the description to the full blog post. But hopefully you learned at least one thing new today and um, I'll see you next time. Thank you so much.